Thank you, Mr. President. Honourable members, ladies and gentlemen, overall across Britain, editorial staff numbers have fallen dramatically. Over time, the quality of their output inevitably suffers. We made war on Iraq because too many newspapers happily accepted the political lie that Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and was able to launch them within 45 minutes. If the current trend continues, we will end up without the essential media filter that acts at, the, at, at its best on behalf of a public deluged with self-interested public relations material. And much of that emanates from governments. The UK government has 1,500 press officers. It issues 20,000 press releases a year and spends millions on PR firms. The Foreign Office alone spends 600 million a year on public diplomacy. Ladies and gentlemen, these aren't my words. These are the words of Roy Greenslade. <laughs> he wrote these in the last five months. That's a disgrace. <laughs> Quoting me against myself. <laughs> I felt like doing the entire speech quoting him against himself. And the slight problem, the slight problem of this debate is this debate talks not only just about the press, I thought this was a debate about the media. And I, I want to start off by asking the audience here, who here this morning bought a newspaper with their own money? A, a smattering. The rest of you obviously bought it with somebody else's money. But um, the look at this. That's pathetic. You're supposed to be the, 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 the cream of intelligentsia in this country, apart from Cambridge. Um, and uh, that's where I went. Um, uh, how to make friends and influence people, Mr. President. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, the, the, the hard truth is, is that little poll demonstrates the media's not. I wish the government was in my pocket. Oh, God, I wish. L let me tell you something. In 2010, 38,000 public servants earned more than £100,000 a year. The average salary of a, B of a television producer in Britain today is 16 grand. We we we're not influential anymore. We like to think we're influential, but we're not. Do you know who really has got the, uh, the government in their pocket? It's the financial lobby. The, 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 the lobby generally, but the financial lobby in particular. If you want to find out who pulls the strings of government, do what pr I tell to all of my investigative journalists working for me, follow the money. So I'm going to follow the money with you. The Bureau works out that over 50% of Tory party funding comes directly from people who have made their oodles in the financial services sector. 50% of Tory money comes from the financial services. And the size of the financial lobby, they've got money, whereas, as, as we heard Roy Green say so articulately demonstrate in my quote, the, the media just doesn't have money anymore. Whereas the financial lobby spends £100 million a year in lobbying the government. How does the lobby operate? Well, first of all, there, there, there's external pressure. Um, for instance, think tanks. The financial lobby spends £1.3 million uh, on, on think tanks, many of which I'm sure members of the audience will go on to become members of. There are lots of meetings. We managed to get leaked documents from the British Bankers Association, showed covert meetings with Rohan Silva, special advisor to the PM, Giles Wilkes, Vince Cable, special advisor, Steve Hilton, former Cons Conservative Director of Strategy, Norman Lamb, Nick Cleggs, then chief, poli chief political advisor. Had we not gotten this leak, we wouldn't have found out about these because if you want to meet a special advisor, a SPAD, they don't, have to they don't have to record it unless they get unless it's over £140. I mean, there are six ministers from three departments who uh, they've actually made as policy that you can call them up, fifth, and, and, and only 50 companies have been given those names. Media don't have direct lines to ministers. I wish we did. The big four accountancy firms donated £1.36 million. They, 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 they gave £500,000 worth of donations to the political parties. And, and, and in, the, in the House of Lords, 16% of the House of Lords have direct links with the financial services sector. And are they proper? Are, you ask, where, is this money resulting in anything? Is it successful? Well, I will ask the question, where was the proper Leveson inquiry into the financial crisis? Where was the, 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 the detailed analysis of what went wrong? It didn't happen. 
Instead, we get cuts in corporation tax of 28% to 24%, a reduction in the 50% tax for individuals. We get 5% tax rates for foreign subsidies, basically turning London into an offshore capital. Amazon, Facebook, Google UK and Starbucks, massive lobbyists, they pay just £30 million in tax over the past four years, despite generating more than £3.1 billion in sales. And there's still no register of lobbyists out there. We know who the journalists are. We don't know who the lobbyists are. They're working in the back room. I mean, against all this is the press. They're right up against strident libel laws. I mean, my inbox is filled with libel attacks from the likes of Carter Ruck, who are paid significantly more than journalists are paid. Papers are losing money hand over fist. No wonder he's got his ha head in his hands. He's depressed about where the Guardian's going. Sorry about this, but pa <laughs> papers losing money hand over fist. The Mail, the Sun, the Mirror, the Express, and the Star between them made 250 million pounds last year. Well, that may be the case, but other papers are losing money hand over fist, and the future looks a bit bleak. A lot of your arguments are rooted in the old past. You're not, none of you, with the exception of you, because I haven't heard your argument, none of you have talked about what, what is the current situation. Look at the audience, none of them bought papers. Uh, yes, we, we may be, we may be it, preaching to pensioners who still think it, they have to get a paper with their, with their, morn, with their egg. But the, the young people of today, the media has is not, is not got a future. Um, and, and yes, the media can act on a micro basis, but I think it's getting less and less able to do so. So rather than the government being in the pocket of the media, I'd argue that the media is in real danger of becoming pocket-sized.